Hello and welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and another unboxing. Now I am building a few Outbacks and one of my customers said, you know, for wheels, I want to get some head wheels. So we decided on a set of aluminum wheels and, you know, I go back and forth on this. Sometimes carbon wheels, sometimes not. Um, on the road, I generally do not like um, carbon wheels. They're just too much faff. But on the road, I'm sorry, on gravel and mountain, you've got a much bigger tire size and you've got cush core and you've got other things that you can put in there to protect that rim if you bottom out or, or you know, hit do a, a large, a big hit, if you will. So, but one of the deciding reasons for why my customer went with the aluminum rims is because the aluminum rims are hooked, whereas the carbon rims from a head are hookless. And so, you know, that debate whether hookless is safe or not safe and you know, there's been a lot on YouTube on uh, for road hookless. Plus, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of restrictions. You can only use these tires, and you can only have this pressure, and and the onus is on the rider. Um, you know, I, they could put a tire on that's not hookless compatible and have issues or have the tire blow off. I'm I'm sure you've seen a lot of that stuff. So we decided to go with the aluminum for the hooked rim. Now, they call out for a sweet spot of 40 to 45 millimeter for tires. So that's what we're going to install, some WTB tires on there that are 40s. The gentleman doesn't want 45s or even 48s, which is what fits inside the outback so the chain stays and the fork fits 48 no problem i've got 48 renee hearse with knobbies on there and i also had some slicks on there so wonderful fits just fine but they do call out for a 32 minimum tire so um, the rims themselves are 25 internal with a 32, I'm sorry, with a 30 external. So they recommend a minimum tire of 32. So, you know, that's fairly wide, although, I mean, Zip is coming or came out with some really wide rims. And I forgot what the numbers were. So if you folks want to uh, make a comment down below just to educate the rest of the, the viewers. But that was a much wider rim when they release their SRAM Red Explorer or whatever they call it, their 13-speed their gravel setup. So um, we talked about the hooked part. Now let's talk about that they're made in the U.S. So for some folks, you know, these Chinese wheels and Chinese frames and, and Chinese group sets, this is all the rage right now and everyone's looking at these uh, components and frames and wheels because, wow, they're like, you know, a thousand dollars for a set of wheels, which would be, let's say, 2,500 for an Envy wheel set. But some folks still value product that's manufactured in the U.S. And, um, you know, in this case, these are made in Minnesota in their headquarters. And, uh, you know, the, the hubs are also a head hub, so they're not a DT Swiss or anything like that. Now, this particular hub, we went with center lock brake, but also the micro spline because this is going to be a 12-speed gravel, uh, Shimano 12-speed gravel um, cassette that's going to go on here. So we need the micro spline to get that on there. Jay Ben spoke 
So Supreme Race, J-Bend. And a lot of you folks might have seen videos where I've talked about serviceability of wheels is really important. So a J-Bend spoke is something you should be able to find in most places. And if you don't know what a J-Bend spoke is, it comes down and makes a J. And it gets, um, in, it, it's uh, fixed to the rim. And sometimes some folks call that a, um, a failure point uh, right at that J. But um, I don't have any, any real issues or concerns about a J-Bend spoke wheel. So J-Bend spokes, Supreme race in a round spoke. Um, on their higher end wheels, they'll go with a bladed spoke and it'll be like a Supreme X-ray, C-X-ray spoke. So a little more expensive, a little lighter, but you know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you've got this big, big tire in front here. So I'm not so sure that the spokes are gonna hold you back from aerodynamic gains at eight miles per hour <laughs> when you're riding gravel. But anyway, um, so yes, so the spoke count is, um, I don't actually see it on here. So, but um, I knew it at one time, but they don't have a very high spoke count. Um, so one of the things about their wheels that the, the rim is usually so strong that they can go they can get away with the lowest spoke count than most other wheels so anyway now in case you're riding 650 they do make them in 650b so um, most disc brake frames on the gravel side you can ride either a 700 or a 650b so if you like the quality of head wheels and you like the way your 700 wheels ride but maybe you want to try something different and you want to ride a much bigger cushier tire then you'll go to the 650b side and you can ride you know like a um what are they like 50 millimeter or more like 55 millimeter so nice big fat tire and there's quite a bit of discussion as to whether 700 wheels are faster than 650. And if you listen to Rene Hurst, um, so Jan Hein from Rene Hurst, he doesn't think that 650 wheels will slow you down. So he, he rides 650 wheels on quite a few ultras. I think he rode them at, uh, what is that, uh, Dirty Kanza? I think he rode them also at PVP, so a road event and then a gravel event. I think he was riding 650s. I'm not sure. But even if he didn't this time, he has in the past ridden 650 wheels quite a bit. And he likes them. So anyway, um, now the weight, they were claiming 735 for the front, 875 for the rear. I got about 15 grams more per. So, you know, this is not a weight weenie project. I mean, we're on a steel frame anyway. But if you're looking at the weights, um, it's pretty close. You know, 10, 15 grams one way or the other is not going to make or break your decision on a wheel set if the quality is there and the durability is there. So anyway, that's where we're at. We're going to mount those. We got to put some valves in there. So you don't get valves in your, you don't even get a goodie bag for that matter. You just get the wheels. Um, so no goodie bags because the through axles are dependent of your frame, right? So whatever through axle is using on your frame, you just have to make sure you order them correctly, either a 15 millimeter through axle or 12 millimeter through axle and then you have those through axles already associated to your frame uh, but you got to put in a, a valve stem in these because they don't they don't ship with a valve um, which I thought I don't know 
I think that's a little strange, but you add <laughs> your valve stem and then you're good to go. And then your sealant of choice. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you up the road.